everyone. Welcome to Pulse of the Port. I'm your host, Sean Horrid. The skies are a little cloudy around the port today, but we're not so concerned about that. We're more interested in the waters below us. Today, we're going to learn about water quality and marine life within the harbor with the help of Stacy Crouch, environmental specialist with the Port of Long Beach, and our trusty survey boat just behind us. Hi, Stacy. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Thanks for being on the show. All right, tell us a little bit about the water quality here at the port. What are some of the common misconceptions about what we see here? Unfortunately, people still believe that the water is very polluted and that that has an effect on the wildlife, the amount, and the different kinds of species. We have a lot of programs in place dealing with water quality, surveying um, the different animals, and putting forth programs to help our tenants understand what the regulations are. What would you say is the, the situation with the water quality now as it stands? I mean, is this full of marine life out here? It is. It has vastly improved since the 60s. During the 70s, a lot of regulations came into place and they really helped clean up the water. Sounds good. We're getting ready to start here, so just hang on with us for just a second. Before we head out on our own mini survey, let's take a look at how port engineers and construction experts are handling the relocation of oil wells to make way for a brand new bridge. Building a bridge is one of the more complex projects in the construction world. And as the Port of Long Beach begins work on a $1 billion replacement of the Gerald Desmond Bridge, that complexity is already on display. The job doesn't start at ground level, but hundreds of feet below. We need to relocate a lot of stuff to be able to build uh, this bridge and be able to begin construction. And in this case, oil wells are the obstacles. For decades, they've dotted the port's landscape even prior to the construction of the current bridge in the 1960s. 42 of them are affected by the path of the new bridge, and more than half of those need to be completely relocated. Pipes, well casings and all. The ground has to be cleared of obstructions 200 feet below the surface to make way for massive support pilings. It is literally groundbreaking work. No one has ever built a bridge on an active oil field or at least not to the extent that we're seeing here. So that big can, it basically isolates our old oil wells from the outside soil. We need to remove the well casing way deeper than we usually have to. Movement of oil wells and re-abandonment of oil wells that they're having to do here, they're having to invent here. It hasn't been done any, anywhere else. Hats off to these guys for figuring out how to do it. They're paying attention to the content of the soil that's going back into these holes, making sure that it's as close to natural as, as it can be. I mean, the attention to detail is remarkable. That's a very important part of, uh, of what we're doing, making sure that environmentally we don't do anything to uh, impact the surrounding area. Projected as the second largest cable-stayed span in the country, the new bridge will have major positive impacts on the region, giving the largest ships on the ocean clearance to access Port of Long Beach terminals and improving cargo and vehicle traffic flow while providing 3,000 construction jobs a year over the five-year project. The bridge is, is such an artery to the, uh, the national transportation system, or 15% of all the waterborne containerized cargo travels over the current bridge, and uh, we hope to see our market share continue to grow in the decades to come, so it, it's, it's a project that needs to happen, and it needs to happen now. We're putting a lot of construction people to work, and of course, uh, this bridge is vital to the national economy, so once it's replaced, uh, that'll create jobs regionally and across the country. So it's a very important project to the port and to the country. If you'd like more information, please visit newgdbridge.com. Although there aren't nearly as many active oil wells within the harbor as there once was, there are still many hundreds of them providing a valuable source of revenue to the city. We've just gotten underway and when we return, we'll see how vessels impact water quality here at the port and how iron ore is becoming a hot new export. Stay tuned. 